You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Thanks for stopping by today. I'm going to check out Cascade by Matchbox. But a few things. Uh, for my regular watchers who check out all of my videos, I want to say thank you for watching. You know, I've been doing pretty much makers consistently, and those videos have been doing really well. Some of them are bouncing up in views, which is good to see, so thank you very much. But you also know that I have a big collection of games, and I'm looking at a stack of uh, maybe eight off to the side that I just haven't been doing for reasons, as many of you know, because of the way YouTube has been ranking my videos, and, uh, you know, just the way things are going. So I've cut down my video schedule. I'm trying to do all these different things to keep the channel going. So I do appreciate all of you watching, and for any new people, I do tend to talk a lot, all right? So hopefully you enjoy learning about games like this one. Cascade, game number 52, space zero, zero, space zero, one. The super action thump a drum game that's fun for the whole family. Look, she's having lots of fun back there, and he is pressing the button. It's a pretty interesting game that stacks up. Let me show you one side of the box. This is basically a duplicate of the other side, but I will show you. Mine happens to have a little writing on the other side. Now the bottom of the box, it's just like a cardboard insert, and the side panels all kind of look like that. That matches that, which matches that, and then this side has some purple writing on it. So, well, next thing I gotta do is get it out of the box, so let me do that. Uh, let's check out the parts of this game. All right, so as you can see here, there's this giant tower. And these metal marbles come out at an angle to hit here, 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 and then bounce into this tray here to tally up your scores. Now, it is a one-person player and multi-person player. There's a couple games that you can play with the game. Now, when I got it, it was missing the most important part, the instruction sheet. Nowhere online can I find this instruction sheet for the game. So there you go, everybody who uh, was on the hunt like I was. And if you really want it, I'll scan it for you and send it to you. So let me know. So there is front and back. But you can enlarge this on your screen and then do a, whatchamacallit, screenshot. And there you have the full instructions with my thumbs. See, that's always good to have. Okay, so there's that. Now, it was really nicely packaged when I got it. And I was really surprised, surprised, really, 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 really. I said really a lot there. Look at that. Did I say it was a tall tower? See how tall that is up there? Okay, and then everything was nicely bagged. Very cool, metallic-y. Cascade on there. This one's bluish and this one is silverish. They're different colors. And then here is the tray. Now, I did have to order the marbles, which I did. Because that was the only thing missing from this set. So here are the original ones and here are replacements. So they're the same size, just these have nickel plating and these look chrome plated. And then, last but not least, there's a couple other pieces here. Part of the tower. And then this big mat. All right. And I'm, I know it works. I've tested it. I just have not been able to play it without the instructions and all of the marbles. Okay. So these are drums. And then stretched over the top, and they're all in really good shape. Okay, so you see what I have to tend with here. So let me move everything out of the way and slowly build it and show you all the pieces in more detail. All right, important. Cascade must be set up on a level hard surface such as a tabletop. It will not properly operate on a carpet or a similar surface. Save the life of your battery switch off when not in use. That's a good idea. You don't want to just let it run. Set up, remove all contents from box. See, I did that. Including the parts under the box, insert. Well, I didn't have that. Lay, lay set up mat so that double lines used to locate reload ramps appear closest to you, okay? Oh, this is a big one. 
So double lines are closest to me. So there's the double lines. Okay, now I'm wondering if I should just eventually tape this down in the corners carefully or get weights. I might have to do that. All right, then. Okay, place spiral lift as indicated on mat. Okay, see that? It says spiral lift. So that fits perfectly in there. It says 1972 Lesney game. Okay, so that's all set. All right, let's move that. We've seen that now. Three dump, oh, three thumper drum assemblies. Thumper drum. Now, they show you where to do that and set those up in another part. I will show those to you. Okay. There's three thumper drums. Slide this down. Now, I'm going to have to bring the camera way back to show this. Score pit assembly. Okay, so it looks like the pit. Let's slide it way down again. Boy, I didn't really prep for this. I didn't realize it was this huge. Then the foam. Then this. Okay, so it looks like that helps with the bouncing. And reload, lamp, reload ramps B and C. These are the reload lamps. Lamps, ramps. Oh boy, I'm twisting my words today. Okay, so it looks like one. They're sort of universal. The side with this looks like it goes here. Then this clips into here. There's like these little uh, pin and a hole. Okay. And then this looks like it goes under the legs or close to it like this. So that the ramp connects like that. Okay, so there's a little pin here that lets you adjust the distance. And then way down on this end, let's slide it all the way down. There's this another pin here that pins into there. Okay, so that is uh, the reload ramp. All right. Ooh, the little sign, the little flag they call it. Now that goes on the top. Oh boy, I gotta make some room here. See that up there? It's this little sign. There. That is Cascade. Alright, let me reset it all up, completely clear my tabletop, and then we will go on from here. Okay, battery in hand. Now, remove the battery cover, but they give you a couple little instructional things here. It says, pin and battery must make contact. Lift up battery cover. Make sure that motor contact pin on right side of motor is bent over. The side of the plastic retainer wall, that side. See detailed drawing. That's their detailed drawing. Make sure small protection on leg of score pit base fits into an... Okay, we did all that. Let's see. Lift up battery cover located at the base of spiral lift and fit one D-cell battery flat end first into provided space. See front drawing A. Make sure battery is inserted according to diagram in battery box or toy will not work. Okay, toy will not work. So let's get this. I noticed there's like a little thumb area there, so let's just see. No, no. Oh boy. Don't say. Oh, that didn't sound good. Hmm. Oh, I don't think that goes there either. Hmm. Okay, let's see. I mean, it looks like it's just gonna slide in. Oh boy. I heard something wiggling in there, so it obviously must have fallen off at some point. Okay, so the battery goes in this way, flat end, and then, oh, I see, there's a little bent pin here. Uh, can you see that? Boy, just imagine a kid back then having to struggle with something like this. I'll tell you, while I'm here, let's take a look at the bottom so you can see what's going on here. There is the motor. I mean, it's really easy electronics, but there's no wire. So the motor spins here and turns this big wheel, which spins the spiral on the top. Spin the spiral on the top. Let's see. Now why? Why did they design it this way, not some simpler way? Okay, so this looks like the battery is going to bounce up to that. And then this is going to hit this pin. So let's just see what we get. There's two little pins up there. There we go. There we go. OK, 
Okay, that one doesn't hit. That's the problem. So maybe it even got a little misshapen during. Okay, so that does that. Okay, that touches now. Let's get this into here. Flat part in. Okay. With that other one bent out slightly, it doesn't... Okay, there we go. Ooh, ooh, oh, hey, good sign. Not a good sign, I didn't turn it on. On. Oh, okay, so you probably have to have the lid. Whoa, slow down. That should be off, and then you do this. Okay, and then it pops into place. Okay, so that's working. The lid appears to do something to hold it in place. I'll tell you, let me try with the lid on and then we'll go from here. And if I have to take the lid off, I will do it again. I really don't like the way this thing goes on. Okay, so what's happening now? Ooh, that worked. Look. Don't put your head near that. Okay, so it doesn't turn on. I'll tell you what. Okay, so that is finicky. You have to hold it to turn it off. All right, so I'm going to have to adjust that. Let me do that. Oh boy, I really don't like this battery compartment. Probably one of the strangest I've ever seen, ever, in all the games I've ever done. Man, it's flying everywhere. That's spinning great, though. Oh, I see. This got stuck up. Hey, you're stuck up. All right, what I might do then is see if I can just do this without the cover on because it's a very finicky system. That's supposed to push on and stay on. All right, did you design this out there? All right, I'll figure that out. Either way, let's get this into place. So this goes here. Oop, this way. All right, I think I can operate it from here like this and I'll just have to play with it like that. Okay, so it's running anyway. Let's see if we can get a shot of the whole thing going. Now I have the actual boxes, uh, covers on the front and the side so you can get an idea. All right, I might have to angle it slightly. All right, next. Let's stop that for now. I'll just do it manually. There we go. Okay, attach the thumper drum skins to their base. Now it looks like these just stretch over, but they're already stretched on, so why would I take them off to show you that? You just stretch them over. They show a little picture there using like a, something like a tweezers or something, but I don't think it's gonna require that. Switch beep controls the flow of thumper balls. Okay, oh, switch double A turns the spiral lift on and off. We know that. That's that one. Switch B controls the flow of thumper balls. All right. The dry band located under the base of the spiral lift can be replaced by any rubber band or similar size. Okay, looks like someone did that. How to play. Before you begin playing with your cascade, it's important to have placed the thumper drums in exactly the right positions. You can do this by dropping a single ball down the chute from the three drums and into the score pit. Oh, okay, let's try it. Let's drop it in here. Okay, so this is located here. It's a little bit off. These are exactly in position. Let's just drop a ball and see what happens. One, two, three. Ooh, okay, so it's a little short. Doesn't seem to reach. Let's try it again. Oh, I went in and it's returning. Now the spiral down here on the left is gonna bring it back up. So it's like a continuous system. My lighting is horrible. But let's see what happens. All right, place all 10 balls. Now the original had nine, so that's why I bought these. So let me just cut this open and get the 10th. So I'll know what the 10th one is just because it's a different color. And then the one that's stuck in there. Now let, let me just show you the one that's stuck in there. Hold on a second. Well, I'll tell you what, let me do this. Let me show you how they all return back up. 
this way at least we could see that aspect of it. Let's drop these down. Let us move the camera and I will show you what happens next. Okay, so let me just do my manual turning on. That's a little slow, it's faster before. There we go. So those are slowly traveling up. Now it seems when you have all 10 in there, it goes slower. Okay, it's working its way up. And then it's gonna sit in this top compartment until I release them. They went faster there when they were all out. All right, now as, I, as they travel down, let me slide this down so you can see the end. They are going to drop and bounce in to the chute. So here we go. Okay, that was a continuous cycle. They didn't make it all the way back. So let me do this. Now that we've seen that aspect of it, I am going to set everything a little bit better so that you can watch this in action as it's doing, and then we'll learn about the scoring and how to play the game. All right, so they are traveling up now. Now I move this drum a little closer to see if I can get it. Let's see what happens. Here we go. I will release them now. Not bad, not bad. It's returning. Now, the thing about the end here is that the foam needs to sit in this blue spot so that as the balls move out, see, it looks like the scoring is based on how many go in. There's a one, two, three, and four. So that's your scoring. So let's send these all back. The motor seems to be struggling. Again. That's the risk you take with vintage games like this. Now, a lot of times I will have backup of these, like a game like this, and I'll have a couple different options. Let's see here. So if I do need to switch motors out, I could. But it just looks like it's just struggling slightly. It was going great a second ago. Okay. Hmm. Boy, this bad. I gotta figure out this bad compartment. Let me work on this a little bit. Come back and I'll see if I can get it to work flawlessly for you. All right. Uh, I think I've got it going a little wacky here. This rubber band was the issue. It's the wrong type of rubber band. You want something really skinny. Well, you can see what's going on now. Uh, I took a skinnier band, so if you've got this and you're struggling with it, I took a, like a reddish, I'll show you exactly what it is and I'll put it back in, but you will see it's more just like a skinny red band as opposed to these wider bands. What happened is it came off the gear, uh, off the, uh, yeah, the gear, whatever you want to call it, and then it locked up. So that's what I figured out there. So I just kind of did this, put this on, I lubricated the, um, ends of the motor just a little being very careful not to get any on this little gear area here just inside there and then I put a tiny bit on the top here and that seemed to uh, make it go into warp speed so there we go I think I got it now so I'm just gonna leave it like that I'm not gonna mess with the switch I'm just gonna do this with my finger like that and then like that, and then I can stop it and make it go till I get it just right. All right, so now I will get everything cleaned back up. I will start over again. I have moved the back drum up just a little because that's what you're supposed to do. So let's read more now that I've gotten this far and uh, we'll see if I can play. All right, hopefully we got it this time. I mean, that's the joys of vintage games. I really enjoy uh, learning about them, trying to fix them if there's issues, and restoring them back the best I can. That's what I like to do. Okay, so set the spiral lift in motion. Y'all that. Place the 10 balls at the end of the reroll lamp directly before spiral lift so that they run into the base of the spiral. Watch the balls climb up the spiral around, run around the top, and fall down the chute. 
If the drums are positioned correctly, every ball will bounce onto all three drums and into the score pit. If any balls miss the drums or the score pit, the drums have not been placed correctly. You can now control the flow of the balls and fun with switch B. Let one, two, or three balls go at a time, or save up all ten and let them all go at once for a full cascade. When the balls drop into the score pit, your score begins to build up. Some balls will score one, some two, some three, some four. So there you go. And some will not score at all or run back down the rack towards the spiral. When all the balls have been caught up in scoring positions, they can be released by lifting the score pit. Okay, interesting. Did not know that. Okay, so the games. Cascade 10. Two to four players. Games with all ten balls at the top of the spiral. The first player releases one ball at a time until all ten balls have been released. That's tough to do one at a time. Then totals his score. Next player bringing, brings 10 balls to top and follows suit, totaling score at the end of his turn, and so on. Should any player release more than one ball at any one point during his turn, his turn is over at that point. Player totals, not counting balls that he released incorrectly, and next player goes. Player with highest score wins. We're not going to do that one. We're going to do time trial, but let's look at high roller. Any number of players, each player begins his turn with all 10 balls at the top of the spiral lift. First player begins by announcing to other players in the game the exact number of balls he intends to release on his turn. Either one, two, three, or four. No player releases may release more than four balls on his turn. After the first player goes, he multiplies the total score shown on the score pit by the number of balls he released. Oh, so if you just do one times four, two times four, however you do it. This player announced at the start of his turn that he released four. As shown, he received a total of 12 points in the scoring pit. He multiplies his score of 12... So he had 1 and 4, uh, 1 and 2, and 2 and 3. Okay, I guess that equals 10. Yeah, I guess that equals 12. And then player announces he would release 4. Well, he'd so correctly only 2 remain in the score, but he would still multiply his total score by 4, but balls remaining. In, oh, I didn't read the right sentence there. He multiplies his score by 2. 4 for 48. In some cases, all the balls released will not remain in the score pit. They will pass through the score pit and be returned to the spiral for no score. All right. Let's not worry about any of that. The back. First player. Okay. At the start of any turn, player's turn, he may elect to cascade all 10 balls. Player may not multiply a score when electing to cascade. He receives only the exact score shown in the score pit. Oh. So you're going up to 400. Then there's a game called... One, two, three, cascade. Players alternate turns releasing one ball, then two, then three at the end of each player. And there's one called Baffling Ball Bouncer. I'll let you read those. You don't need to hear me. Let's just see this thing go. I'm going to play Time Trial. One or more player. Player begins with one ball at base of spiral lift and nine balls at the top in position ready to release. Player must switch on the spiral lift by pressing A. Release the nine balls at the top one at a time before... Ball at base spiral reaches the top. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what. Let's just turn it on and watch it. That's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to just release. Try to do one at a time and see how that works. Okay. Hard. That one went awry. One went oh, across the floor, watching it travel underneath my, okay. Okay, so something, you know what? They're going to shift and move around. So let me go grab the one that went way across the room. Now you can release the balls by doing this. I get it. Okay, let's try it out. That thing is flying fast. None of them. Okay, so this is going to be tough to collect them all every time. What did I end up with? I have not all of them. Where'd they all go? One under there. Oh, they're probably still at the top. Oh, here's one. Two, four, six, eight. I think I have nine. Okay, lost another one. Let me just send these down. I could see since these don't sit stationary, they move. It could be a real challenge to get this to continually do it. 
You almost need to lock them in place for good, but that's not the game. Up the spiral they go. And let's drop them. Where they go, nobody knows. Here we go. Okay, they all missed. So, that almost feels like I need to make an adjustment to this ramp. Let's move this up two spaces. Let's get this one out. Oh, there's a hidden one. Okay, I think it was about right there. So it's a little closer now. So I have two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing two. Where did they go? I don't know. Let me take two from this bag, so then I'm back to ten. I have to find those at a later date. I like to get all ten in. Here we go. I think I got it. Okay. No, I didn't get it. But they're returning. That's the whole idea. You would think closer, but I'm just going to move that drum a little bit. Here we go. Okay, they all missed drum two. Why? Wow, I thought this would be more precise, but it's very... Very not precise. Oh, there's those other ones. I thought there was something stuck in here. Oh, I think I got too many now. I like this little return, ball return. Okay, so let's just do one. Try to do one. Okay, so it's that second drum. Oh, and look, that hidden one. Let's move that one a little closer. Very fidgety, very fidgety. Missed that drum now. Hey, marble on the floor. No, drum two. Missing drum two every time. It almost looks like it needs to go this way a little bit more. Let's see if we got it. Okay, I want to do as many as I can in there now. I want to try dropping them all. We're going to go for the unofficial Cascade record. We're going to have a hard time with this. Let me drop a few out just to be safe here. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. I'm going to drop them all. And they're all going to make it. Here we go. That was cool. And here we go. And I can fit a few more. We want a good drop here. Go. Oh, two. Two. I can't believe it. Are you kidding me? You 
either way, I have to have the Cascade record because no one's got more than 10 of these steel ones. Let's try one more time. This is it. The unofficial world record for Cascade drop and go. Oh, that was a disaster. That was a disaster. So, ideally, we need to keep testing as you go. Now, I'm going to try to gather up all 19 of these because i got to find the ones that fell on the floor. I'm going to come back. I'll be right back. I'm not stopping. I just want to can't lose track of too many of these. I'll be back. It's loud. Let me tell you that. Whew. Okay, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to turn the motor off so we can concentrate here. And then I'm going to drop just a few as testers because it only holds, I found all 19 by the way. There was a garbage can at the end of the line here and one went in there, two were on the floor and three were hidden around the area here. So let me just drop one and see. So that is not the ticket. So it looks like this drum now needs to come, I don't know which way I had it before. That's the joys of understanding the game. Here we go. Okay, so this drum, depending on this and this. Okay, I don't want to lose any of these. I'm trying to drop them all once I figure it out. You get one try. Okay, that was close. Let me drop another one. That's good. That last drum seems to be a little bit finicky. I'm going to move that drum a little bit closer without trying to move anything else. Okay, let's get this. And I found out I had the foam the wrong way. It's, it's just a slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch. If you turn it the other way, it fits in there better. And that's why I was losing some. Let's get these up to the top. Well, you shouldn't be struggling now. I had you fine-tuned like a fine-tuned machine. Okay, so there we go. Now I can't turn you off. So let me just drop one, see if we got it. Two. Okay, still that one drum. This one and this one over just slightly. Okay, let's see. Here they come. Okay, so this drum, not in a good spot. Let me move it over just a little, this way. I think that's what it was. No. So this drum, this way. See, when the marbles hit it, they move, so it's hard to have them in the same spot every time. Now it's not working at all. Boy, I had this fine-tuned. Let's go this way, this way. That first, the first one. Okay, so that will work, but I'm gonna move this closer without trying to touch anything else. Okay, I'm gonna do a full drop now, here we go. Let's get these all in there. Get those up. It's just fun to watch it do that thing, do its thing, right? Okay, no more will fit up there. I'm just gonna leave it go. I don't know. Kind of adds a little excitement to the whole thing. Imagine hitting that. Isn't that thing. Here we go. Oh, great, great. See if you can touch those, they get in the way. Man, I need one of those little hands that I have. Okay, you get over there. Okay. One more time. Let me move this this way just a little. Okay. All of them, this is gonna happen. This will be my last try. I want to say thanks for watching and supporting Lucky Penny Shop. Hopefully you enjoyed the game, learning about it. I sure did. It was a little challenging, but I think I figured it out. Here we go. 
Fingers crossed. <laughs> two, two, I can't believe it. not done. It's the next day. I was going to edit the video, go live, and then I thought, reading number five, which I did not read on camera, Baffling Ball Bouncer. And it's great fun to just watch the amazing bouncing action. If you remove the score plate, which I did from the score pit, the balls will keep running down the reload ramp, spiral lift, and the bouncing just goes on and on. It's perpetual motion. Just sit back and watch. It's fascinating. It's soothing. It's Cascade. There I realized this has a little switch which you could set so it goes up or set so it locks. So right now it sets a lock. I've spent some time putting the drums in the right spot. I've got some tacky underneath one edge so they kind of stay in place. Here we go. Enjoy this now. I'm just going to space these out.
If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a Lucky Penny, pick it up.